All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Chris, and I'm here with my friend, Dr. Megan. We are jumping on today to kind of share a little bit more specifically about what is helpful to know about your postpartum return to running um, and how you can be more empowered at your six-week postpartum visit to get more guidance and support around how to um, more successfully ease back into running and to better understand what your options are in terms of you know, a lot of those question marks that women have at that six week postpartum visit where we're given this all clear, but what does that even mean? Um, and it's really challenging for most women to understand how to know how to navigate this new phase of their body and how to safely ease back into exercise because we kind of leave women to their own devices to sort of figure it out. And that's really unsupportive and unhelpful. So um, Dr. Megan and I are physical therapists and we also specialize in supporting runners. So we decided to jump on because this is such a passion project of ours to help more women understand what is out there to give them support so they don't have to just figure it out on their own or be left to kind of have all these question marks and just have to consult Dr. Google because there's lots of conflicting information on Dr. Google um, about what is helpful and what's not helpful during this phase. So thank you, Megan, for joining us. Um, I'd love for you to um, introduce yourself and share a little bit about how you came to help the special population. Um, we'll kind of go from there. All right, cool. Thanks for having me, Chris. Um, of course. So I, I started out working in sports and orthopedic PT. Um, I've been a runner since most of my life, but really since high school. Um, and then after college, I really just took off doing my own thing, coaching myself. And um, it just kind of organically morphed into this um, passion of running and, and being supportive of my female co-athletes, um, yeah. my, my teammates and competitors and whoever else I was training with. Um, but I just, I think there are so many, there's a lot of intricacies in the female body and that you don't see as much in male athletes. And totally. it, it's really, as much as the human body is exciting to me and fascinating from a PT perspective, the female body and physiology is like a whole different level and being able to combine female athletes and running, coaching, PT, all of these pieces together. I, I just love it. Ditto. I know there's so many nuances to it. And I feel like even in my own PT kind of career, in my own running career, I also started out high school um, cross country was sort of where my running relationship started and has just continued through my lifetime and in, in various shapes and forms. Um, but yes, I definitely found myself in my PT career, immediately gravitating towards wanting to help the kind of runner population. And then over the last few years, really started to hone in on female runners, and then even more so into the pelvic health space, because there's such um, another need there in terms of the lifespan of us as ladies, whether or not we're having children, but that, you know, whole um, abdominal system is just very different in how we absorb load and impact load, and especially with running specifics, um, to kind of help support this this group even more so. Um, and there's continuing to be more and more research even about our, our own kind of female cycles and the different hormone changes that go with that, um, not to mention then the hormone changes that happen during pregnancy and, and postpartum that also impact this whole system too that influences our ability to be the stronger runners that we always want to be. Um, and the different you know nuances, like you said, that kind of come up with that and we, we need more support. Yeah, and I think you especially are in a, a great position to do that because you're a pelvic floor PT and yeah. a runner and a running coach. So you've got all of these pieces that you don't, a lot, you know, we have pelvic floor PTs and I disclaimer, I am not a pelvic floor PT, um, <laughs> but we have pelvic floor PTs, we have running PTs, we have coaches, but to have all three together is like, that you, I don't know, your, your clients really strike gold when they meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a unicorn. I, I first started out just kind of like in the, the sports and ortho field. I never thought that I would end up um, blending the pelvic health component to it. But yeah, for 
our viewers and things that um, aren't as familiar with the PT world, most people aren't unless you're a physical therapist, um, there we all kind of specialize in particular fields of physical therapy. So Megan and I are both in the sport and ortho kind of category. And then I also have an additional specialty um, in terms of pelvic health and female pelvic health more specifically um, in blending those two. So often, um, you know, know that you may have to work with a few of us to get all the support that you need, but especially for postpartum, which is kind of what we're start targeting today and helping to support that return to exercise and then eventually return to running. Um, it's really helpful to connect with someone that is a pelvic floor physical therapist to a help understand the unique needs of that, those, that postpartum period and the recovery period. And then sometimes after that, if you need more support in terms of specific running mechanics and how to kind of ease back into those higher level activities, that's when you may need to then kind of graduate from pelvic floor PT to a sports and ortho pelvic P or sports and um, ortho PT um, to kind of help you do that gradual aspect too. Sometimes it depends, but yeah, if you can find someone similar to myself um, that kind of does a little bit of a blend of both that's helpful. Um, but not, not always super common to find us We're we're a little unique, but the blend of, um, working with a, a physical therapy team is obviously an option. Megan, can you share a little bit about kind of your own personal experience? You are a mama. Um, <laughs> tell us how old Emma is. Um, Emma will be two in July. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tell us how your um, your like experience through. Did you run through pregnancy and running postpartum? How did you kind of go through that whole process? So um, yeah, I ran through pregnancy. Um, I ran up until a day past my due date. Awesome. <laughs> um, most of the time, it was really just a shuffle, but I got out there, and it was hard because it was Ju June and July at that point, so um, it was hot even when I went early in the morning, <laughs> but, yeah. um, I would go out and just do enough to feel like I accomplished something. And if I went early in the day, it actually would help with, um, my ankles and, and feet were so swollen by the end. So it would yeah. help with that a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, so that was, that was the biggest thing is that just being able to accept that I was slowing down over the course of, sure. especially in the third trimester. Um, but I ran, um, I actually ran a PR uh, at the 15K in, uh, I think I was like seven weeks pregnant. So really early, but like Dang, girl. crazy yeah. hormonal changes at that point. Yes. Um, so I was pretty excited about that. And then at 20-ish weeks, I ran most of a marathon. Um, I dropped out with like five miles to go just because the weather was not cooperating. <laughs> so okay. um, you're still a champ for even, <laughs> even doing that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I was, I was very fortunate to be able to run the entire pregnancy. Um, yeah. I saw, I was working with a pelvic floor PT for maybe a month or six weeks around seven months pregnant. Okay. Um, and she was, great. She was a huge part of helping me be able to keep running. So, um, that was awesome. huge. And then I saw her again, six or eight weeks postpartum somewhere around there. Um, cool. just to recheck everything. And, um, honestly, those visits with her were like, and sometimes I brought my daughter with me too, cause I was on maternity leave. So, yeah. um, but it was it, like, it felt like I was being pampered when I went to those visits. Like mm. she was just so supportive and um, she was talking me through every little thing that may or may not happen and how to, I was already running by that point, but um, how to gradually get back into it. Um, so it, those, those postpartum visits were really, they were really good. Um, from a physical standpoint, but really, I think more mentally, she was just so supportive and um, that was refreshing. It was nice. 
I think that's so awesome. And I also just want to also put a shout out that, you know, Megan, you being a physical therapist and then still seeking out physical therapy from this very unique specialty to get support and um, both on the prenatal side, as well as the postpartum side, you know, this is, this would be the, the perfect, you know, environment or the, the perfect kind of standard of care, if I could design it would be that if you're pregnant, connect with a pelvic floor PT during your prenatal period. We are so helpful in terms of answering questions for you, helping to provide um, feedback around how you can keep moving and exercising safely to kind of take the guesswork out of it. And then also to already have a relationship established so that on the postpartum end, you already have a friend on your team that you get to go reconnect with right after um, to help you get back to the things that you love to do. In this case, for Megan, it was getting back to running. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was awesome. And I, I had to kind of, um, like, I didn't have any issues after, like, when I went for my six-week visit, and we'll talk about this later, I'm sure, but yeah, um, totally. I, I was feeling good, everything was fine, but I wanted to reconnect with my pelvic PT, and my yeah. OB was like, well, what, I, I mean, nothing's wrong, why are you going to go? I'm like, well, I just had a baby, I, like, I need to go and get everything, like, I want to be able to run, and my pelvic PT is the one who's most likely to help me with that, so um I had to ad advocate a little bit for what I wanted on that. Um, but knowing that I had that relationship with her already, um, I think that made it a lot easier to do um, rather than going in cold and saying, ah, somebody told me I should see a pelvic PT. I don't really know. I guess sign me up. So totally, definitely helped to have I, that relationship. I think this is such an important piece. And this is also one of the big topics you and I wanted to kind of talk about today. So let's just jump right into it in terms of you know, a lot of women, you know, we, we, we have delivery of the baby. And then most women are kind of told, like, take it easy, don't really do a whole lot of exercise or anything during those first six weeks until your postpartum visit, most people are having it around that six week mark, we go in for the six week mark, most people unless there's some really big, you know, red flag, or if there's an infection, maybe to, you know, the, the tissues that are healing, whether that's vaginally or abdominally for the c-section, or anything like that, for the most part, most women are kind of given an all clear at that visit saying, hey, ease back into activities. You're, you know, now clear also to resume intimacy with your partner. Um, you know, basically like just, you know, the interpretation of that all clear is really vague. And, yeah. and you know, I would love for you to share kind of what you experienced just as a as just a, a mom, not even as a PT that was in that situation, but just as a, as a new mom, what, what information were you told at your six week visit? So when I went in for my visit, um, they asked how everything was going and I said, everything's been good. I've been running a little bit. So I started running at two weeks postpartum, which is crazy. Um, and I'm a little bit of a unicorn in that <laughs> aspect. So, Megan definitely um, is. Yeah. <laughs> But I was like, I was running not very much. Um, but anyway, so I went in for the six week visit. I said I had started running. I was feeling good. Oh, well, you should, you should probably not be running. It's too soon. Okay. Um, later in the same visit, they said, okay, go back to doing whatever you want to do. Okay. So within a half hour, <laughs> I got completely opposite advice. I don't... And I mean, I just don't know how people navigate that. <laughs> it's really hard. And I have another question too, Megan. Did you have any like movement assessment done in that six week postpartum checkup to determine whether or not exercise might be safe for you or anything like that that was used to determine how to give you recommendations? Nope. They took my weight. Um, they checked out everything healing wise. Um, so I did an exam. Then I sat in the doctor's office and we chatted for a few minutes and that, but that was it. So yeah, and, no, no movement. And this is pretty standard. And I also want to just put a disclaimer on here. Megan and I are not wanting to share this information to point a finger of blame at anyone. We're more kind of pointing out the standard of care that's established right now in our medical system in the US. OBGYNs are challenged with the task of having to clear people at that six week postpartum visit and 
tell people whether or not they're clear for exercise, but OBGYNs have not gone through any training for movement assessment to determine whether or not someone is really safe to return to movement and especially higher level activities like running. Not their fault. They are just, they've been given that task in their kind of six week checkout for their patient. Megan and I have gone through graduate level education to determine people's movement readiness for sports and activities. So in a perfect world, we should have our six week postpartum checkup with our OB to check all the things that Megan said from that kind of very specific medical standpoint, our vitals cool, our, do we have any signs of infection? kind of also do a little bit of a clearance, in my opinion, for any postpartum depression, anxiety, any other support that might need to be facilitated at that point, right? And then we should say, okay, you're, we want to give you the all clear to now connect with a physical therapist to help you better assess your movement mechanics, how your body is reorganizing in terms of that kind of postpartum period, your abdominal muscles needing to reorganize and learn how to reconnect now after they've been overly stretched for nine months to accommodate baby, how that pelvic floor has also been overloaded for nine months to accommodate and hold everything up through those nine months, right? And how to re-strengthen that system to then be ready and have the movement prerequisites to ease back into higher level fitness. That would be the ideal situation. Totally. <laughs> and I think and um, I had mentioned this to you as an idea and maybe somewhere in the world this is happening and that would be fantastic, but having a PT on staff in an OB office and, and not just for postpartum checks, but for you know other women who are dealing with pelvic organ prolapse or incontinence, a PT, a pelvic floor PT can help with this entire yes. population. And and like Chris said, the the OBs just don't have they have like a little snippet of movement training in med school. And for some of them, med school was a long time ago. Right. Um, even if even if they're fresh out of residency, med school was still a few years ago. So. Right. Um, so this is stuff that we do every day as PTs and we are very familiar and comfortable with those movements and assessing. And it, it's just, um, like you said, it, we don't want to point blame or it, it's yeah. just a fault in our healthcare system and how we're set up, totally. but it really shows that we need to be a team with PTs and OBs and lactation consultants, everybody has to be a team to help the new mom. Totally. The team approach is where everybody wins because that allows us all to be able to support the new mom in this way where you're already in such a challenging phase. It's a beautiful one and it's also really challenging. There's so many, so much new. And then we have the, the physical challenge of, a, of your body trying to heal while also now carrying 24 seven for this new little one. And so we want our, our moms and our, our fellow ladies to know what their options are because that six week postpartum visit, I find that so many of my patients, you know, later on come to me months and sometimes years down the line and go, I wish someone had just told me, I wish someone told me at that six week mark that I had a, I had an option to see someone like you. I didn't even know that a pelvic floor physical therapist existed. Some don't even know really what physical therapists in general do. Hence also why we're having this conversation to say, if someone had told me, I, I would have asked, or why didn't my OB tell Why didn't my OBGYN tell me that this was an option? Many OBGYNs don't even know we exist. This is another challenge in the medical system. Um, and also another place where Dr. Megan and I are wanting to come on and share and say, hey, at your six week postpartum visit, whether or not you felt like you had a challenging delivery or not, sometimes it's really streamlined and that's awesome. For the majority of women, it's not streamlined, okay? And whether you had a vaginal delivery or a C-section delivery, we highly recommend that you ask your OBGYN for a referral to see a pelvic floor PT at that six week postpartum visit, no matter what. Let us take the guesswork out of it for you and help give you the guidance 
so that we can create a plan for you so you can take actionable steps while you're having to do everything else already to take care of baby and all of these new changes that are happening in your world. That's a lot to be managing by yourself. Yeah, it's it's so much. And and you don't I think a lot of moms don't realize how much it changes. And it yeah. changes instantly. Like you're you're pregnant for nine, ten months, whatever however you want to calculate it. Right. Um, <laughs> and things are happening over that long period of time. And then all of a sudden you're not pregnant anymore. And right. things don't go back to normal all like in a matter of hours it's weeks months years and i i think just yeah just being sure that um that women know they have that option to see mm -hmm. a pt um as as soon as everything is is cleared for that and it um it might just be one or two visits if everything oh. is clear and you're feeling good then that's great. You've gotten the okay from your OB. You've gotten an okay from a PT, a pelvic PT. Now you're really yeah. good to go. Sometimes it takes a couple months to get there and that's okay. There's a huge totally. range of normal, but let your PT, your pelvic PT, especially let your pelvic PT be a, huge, a big part of that team and, and, and taking that load off of you and just saying, do this, do this, don't do this. And we'll go from there. Totally. And I think, you know, even just information is powerful and knowing that you have information that is specific to you and your case to say, hey, yep, no, I, I know that this is appropriate for me right now during this phase of healing. And we're kind of establishing the building blocks to get back up to those higher level activities. And, you know, and if there is a kink in that process of getting there, you have your your person, i.e. your pelvic floor PT, to, to help you navigate around those bumps in the process. So that again, you're not like, okay, so now what do I do, right? And I loved how you said, you know, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's literally like one to three visits. It's not gonna have to always be this thing where you're seeing a PT for multiple times a week for multiple weeks. Often I see, you know, a few of my patients like one to three visits in the very beginning, and then I kind of give them some tools and some things to work on. And then I kind of check back in with them usually about a month, two months later on as we kind of go through depending on their needs to just help them also know that they have someone looking out for them because mamas, you're busy looking out for everybody else and you deserve to have somebody who's looking out for you. Absolutely. Right. And if we think about too, the amount of like the average prenatal visits you know, the average, I think, is somewhere around 14-ish in the process. Um, and obviously, that can change depending on, you know, some different complications that might arise or whatnot. But on average, in the U.S., it's about 14-ish visits. And then on the postpartum side, you get one to two. That doesn't add up to me. Um, yeah. And again, is another just point that we need better postpartum care for women and that we deserve better in terms of that postpartum support. And part of that is pelvic floor PT and helping to share that this is an option and that right now know that mamas, you're going to have to ask for it. It's not an automatic referral. It, it's kind of, this is kind of a sidetrack, but it's kind of interesting that we are, um, seeing similar things because um, you're in California and I'm in New York yeah. for anyone who doesn't know and yes. I've always thought um, that the west coast in terms of PT west coast is so far ahead of the east coast <laughs> and and we're we're both like 20 years behind Australia but um, and France <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so so it's interesting that we are in that same or similar position in terms of this postpartum return um, and I don't know if that's just that in general, the East and West Coast are kind of meeting in the middle with all things PT, or if that's just, I don't know. It's just something I thought about that's interesting. It's a great point. And I think in general, you know, physical therapy is still pretty new, and especially pelvic floor PT is even mm -hmm. newer in terms of um, access to care in our medical system. So, um, you know, we're postpartum care it has improved since our mothers, you know, went through the process, but there's still a huge opportunity for improvement in both of our opinions still in terms of how we continue to 
provide really, you know, a better standard of care because what the standard is now, in my opinion, is subpar. Um, but yes, you make a great point in terms of, you know, sometimes we can think like, oh, West Coast is more progressive and things, which it can be in some ways, but we still have huge opportunities to improve on this side too. And the amount of um, physicians that I have encountered and we've discussed this and shared, you know, this information, even they're like, why don't they tell us this in medical school that like you're available and that we can refer to you? And like, I didn't even know that you did this. And I'm like, man, if our own like referral source doesn't even know, like this is another huge breakdown in the system. So hence so why Megan and I are also coming and we're like, all right, let's try to do like a little grassroots here of like the more ladies we can tell and, you know, know about this option, the more that we can help advocate for each other. Right. To get this information out there. Right. And you, if, if you're having trouble with, and this is pregnancy, postpartum or any other point. Um, yeah. If you're having trouble getting that referral from your OB, you can go yes. to your primary care provider, or you can also go through direct access. So insurance coverage is variable. And I don't know True. what the California specifics are, but in New York, we have 30 days or 10 visits for direct mm -hmm. access. And mm -hmm. most insurance companies are covering that now just as regular as if you had a referral. So, um, so even if you're getting a little bit of resistance in in someone not wanting to give you a referral, there are other ways you can still connect with a PT um, and get the care that you want and that you deserve. Great point. And yeah, it can be any physician to write you a, a referral. It does not have to be an OBGYN. I often just say, hey, be prepared at your six week visit to ask for one because you're already there. So trying to kind of kill two birds with one stone. Another point too, if you happen to run into a physician that is resistant to writing you a referral for PT, I also let my patients know that they have the right to ask their physician to document that in their chart right now that they are refusing to give you a referral for physical therapy. And then you will immediately get a referral because <laughs> the physician will not want to write that in your chart. That's so I also want to just encourage my fellow ladies to you may have to push back a little bit, unfortunately, but know that you deserve that support and you deserve that care. And you don't have to wait until you have an issue. In my opinion, you already like you already went through a hell of a lot through pregnancy and delivery. We don't have to wait and see if you develop issues later before we give you support. You should deserve that on the front end as a prophylactic support and recovery. And at that six week point too, you are nowhere near healed. Those tissues are still going through a lot of healing. Soft tissue, whether it's vaginal tissue or abdominal tissue um, and all those kinds of things, just tissue in general through our whole body, muscular or skin, all the things require a minimum of three to four months of healing time. So at six weeks, we are still well under that healing window. And yet women are being given the all clear to resume exercise. That's not helpful. And uh, on top of that tissue healing, you've got all of these hormonal changes that Thank then you. continue even if you're breastfeeding, they'll continue after you stop breastfeeding. So let's say you are breastfeeding for a year. Yep. Now we're looking at somewhere around 15 months postpartum that things might settle back to normal. But then mm -hmm. at that point, maybe you're looking to get pregnant again. Okay. So we're going to just go through this again. So it, yeah, don't I, and I, um, yeah, there's not one, things are a continuum and always evolving. And um, yeah, like you said, it's better to be proactive about it because you don't want to wait and see, you can prevent a lot of things. Yeah. And why, why not take care of it now? Totally. And at that six week mark too, I mean, this is also where Megan and I, especially as running coaches and a lot of our running clients, you know, they're, they're dying to get back to running and we totally get it. We understand as you know, runners ourselves, totally. <laughs> um, you know, we, we love to, to lace up and get out there. It's, it's important for our mental sanity. It's important for, you know, physically just keeping our body fit. 
you know, but something that Megan and I really want to stress and really recommend to our runners, but all, all, all postpartum mama runners in general, that six week mark is not a time to just lace out and go run. You need to have your strength base reestablished before we are clear to start adding impact loading, like running into the system. Too many women are using that six week clearance. And again, it's not your fault. It's just a fault of not having good information of, okay, I got the all clear. I want to lace up and go run. That body does not have the strength prerequisites yet to do that. That pelvic floor still is undergoing healing. Whether or not you had a vaginal delivery, that pelvic floor still had nine-ish months of pressure down on it while you were in your pregnancy period. And then if we have a C-section, you just had a serious abdominal surgery. Actually cut through the entire abdominal wall and nine layers of tissue in order to bring your baby into the world. That abdominal core system is nowhere near healed or reconnected yet at six weeks to now add running load to it. We need to be building our base and then gradually adding in the, the running impact after in order to allow your body to feel successful, to also support still a more hyper flexible body. So that relaxant hormone, like you were saying, Megan, is still in the system. And even more so when we're breastfeeding, it'll last for three months after we stop breastfeeding. So a more flexible body needs more strength in order to support that system. Otherwise, we have an increased risk for tendonitis, a lot of joint pain throughout the whole body that people are always like, why do my, why do my knees still hurt? Why do my ankles still hurt? Why do my hips hurt? Fill in the blank hurt, right? We need strength in that system. And then two, if we're breastfeeding, a lot of our calcium stores in the body are being redirected away from mom to the milk for baby. And now if we add load of running too fast and too quickly, we increase our risk for stress fractures on top of that. So these are other things that we're not educating moms on early enough to be able to make good informed decisions. Yeah, I think the stress fracture thing is um, really interesting. And I had a stress fracture a few years ago. And so when I came back to running postpartum, mm -hmm. I was really nervous about that. And like any little pain in my foot that started to kind of feel a little bit like that stress fracture. I was like, Oh no, okay. I'm not going there again. So yeah. it's, um, I think it in combination with the calcium depletion and then adding yeah. on the load, which you need some load, you need some stress on your bones to stimulate yeah. it, but healthy you want to go out mm -hmm. and run 10 miles. That's very different from doing some, strength exercises and walking and maybe running a half mile at a time or a minute. Um, and then we know as new moms, you're up at all hours of the night and Thank everything you. all is everywhere. And, and you're probably not eating and drinking well. So now we have this nutritional deficit and imbalance right. on top of the the breastfeeding, calcium depletion, and not getting enough sleep and recovery. And it's just this storm, the perfect storm for injury. So having the information ahead of time and knowing how to manage all of those factors yes. and, and being able to say, okay, this is a day or this is a week that I'm really going to focus on X, Y, Z. And next week that I think will be a little bit better. I'm going to focus on the next part. And slowly building up and finding those priorities. Totally. Because, you know, Megan and I find with a lot of our runners, too, that, you know, when they do finally get that option to go out and run, most times, and I have totally been guilty of this, too, when I've come back from an injury, it's like, I just want to go out and run an hour. You've gone from not running for a while to then all of a sudden trying to run for an hour. And that's a significant like just shock to the system and our body doesn't have the prerequisites to do that yet. Our tissues don't have the acclimation time. We need to build up to that. Also our muscles haven't had time to acclimate back up to that. Um, 
and also just the idea that we need to be thoughtful of not going from zero to 60 miles an hour without having some gradual increase to work up to that. And so many of my patients end up in my office if they haven't known me ahead of time, usually because they've tried to go too fast too soon. And then they're, they run into some pretty major injuries pretty quickly, whether it's a hip issue, a knee issue, um, but more often than not, a pelvic floor issue. And some of those can be really devastating and they can be avoidable if we were just given the right guidance in terms of how to kind of ease back into things more appropriately. Megan, would you share kind of how you gradually added back into your running? And again, like you said, Megan is a little, is a unicorn in the sense that she got back to running two weeks postpartum. This is not what we typically recommend for people, but Megan, again, she did her due diligence. She had her pelvic floor PT on the front end while she was pregnant. Megan is also not your average mom being educated in PT and knowing how to strengthen and re-coordinate her body and whatnot. So there's totally a different learning curve here. But also Megan still followed up with her pelvic floor PT afterwards to check in and make sure that things were working well, that she was connecting in the way that she needed to in order to be able to gradually add on to her mileage over time. So Megan, share with, share with us how you kind of went through that process of um, your postpartum recovery. So on day, I guess the first full day. So Emma was born in, in the afternoon. So the next day, um, under the guidance of my pelvic PT, I started doing like very, very light Kegels just to try to get my brain aware that mm -hmm. those muscles are still there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, so that's how it started on day one. Um, and then we went for a walk down the hall in the hospital and that was it. It was like, it probably took like 10 minutes, but um, it was maybe okay. 200 feet. <laughs> so, and Megan, you had vaginal delivery or C-section yeah. just to let people know. Vaginal delivery. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. And she was small too. She was under seven pounds. Um, and I had, I don't know what degree of tearing, but some degrees, a few stitches. I don't know. Um, okay. I was mild. At, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mild. Um, okay. So over the next couple of days, like when we got home, we walked down the driveway to get the mail and our driveway mm -hmm. is like a quarter mile. So it's a half mile. And then the next day we went a little farther and then I didn't feel so good. And like everything was really mm. sore. Um, I was pelvic floor wise or just whole body wise? pelvic floor and my low back. So I was like, okay, that okay. was too much. Yeah. Um, so I took a day back and we went back to just the mailbox. And then over the next 10 days, I was like, okay, I'm feeling good. We've done some longer walks. We've done faster. So I ran for literally 30 seconds at two weeks. That was it. There we go. Yeah. Um, so still two weeks and that's really early. Um, mm -hmm but it was 30 seconds. Yeah. And I had run the day after my due date, I had run four miles. So my body is not like, that was nothing new to be out running. Um, mm -hmm. But I started at 30 seconds. Really and that valuable. is, that is where I have my clients start at 30 seconds, a minute maybe. Um, and we work up from there. So I think it wasn't until like, three weeks later, two or three weeks later that I was stringing together a mile, two miles. Um, and from there I added on to my long run one mile a week and that was it. So, yep. um, it was really gradual and it was frustrating to be <laughs> holding myself back, yeah. but I knew that if I went for it, like I, my brain wanted to go, but I knew that if I did that, it was going to backfire at some point. Totally. So having the knowledge as a PT and connecting with my pelvic PT to um, help bring me back to reality sometimes, um, that, that was key. And yeah. so I'm, I'm very, you know, yeah, like you said, I'm in a different position because I'm a PT. Um, but yeah, it's, it's gradual. It takes a long time. And for some women, it takes 
several months to string together a couple miles and that's okay and i think totally okay we just need to reinforce that everyone is every woman and every pregnancy for every woman is different yes. and totally. what happened for your first kid is not going to be the same as your fifth kid and what mm. happened with you isn't the same as your best friend or your sister even though you have a lot of the same genetics so everything is different but um you know listening to your body is a big part of it but it's not everything that's if you don't know what to listen for then okay. <laughs> you what are, what are you listening for you you don't know so your body can be yeah. telling you so many things and you just you know like everything with pregnancy and postpartum oh it's probably normal but maybe it's not and yeah. you need some guidance to help you get through that and get to the next level. Totally. And yeah, just because things are common, i.e. it's common to have back pain, you know, after delivery, or it's common to leak with exercise or have difficulty getting to the bathroom in time after baby, or it's common to, you know, still have kind of aches and pains in your hip or knee or ankle. These are all things that my patients often share with me and that I know is kind of a, a general assumption. Just because it's common doesn't mean that those are things that you need to just deal with or accept as your new normal, mamas, okay? That is not how this goes, even though I understand assuming that common must mean that that's just typical. Let your physical therapist help you unpack that. Let us help you understand what is normal and if it's not normal, how to get you back there. Because also your little ones aren't getting any littler <laughs> and they also don't get any, any slower. They just <laughs> increase in their speed and they increase in their size. True. So we need you to be strong too, to keep up with that, both to run and chase them as well as to be able to go out and do your runs like you want to for your own mental and physical sanity. All of that requires a good amount of strength work. And like Megan, you were saying, and your really gradual return to run, how are you also inc incorporating your strength training during that time? So I was doing a lot of body weight training. Um, and then when I felt comfortable, so more of um, comfortable in like knowing that Emma was supported, um, yeah. not so much for my own comfort, but um, mm -hmm. Like I, we would do squats and lunges and I was holding her um, or I'd have her in the carrier. Mm -hmm. So that was my weight training. Um, Perfect. That little bit. And when we would go out for walks, I wanted to be the one pushing the stroller or carrying her on her on in the backpack or front pack, I guess, um, mm -hmm. because I wanted to get that extra strength training in knowing that that's going to help me in my running too. So a lot of body weight training just because I didn't have access to a gym at that point. But um, yeah. so far, it's been sufficient. <laughs> yeah. And even that, yeah, we don't need a ton of like extra big weights to have to have strength training or resistance training, body weight stuff, things with some, you know, resistance bands at home, um, using your little ones as your built-in weights, like Megan said, are really great ways to start incorporating that into your routine. So it doesn't have to be complicated. But again, use your PT resources like us to tell you how to do it and right. to give you a plan so that you don't have to figure it out on your own or be left to your own devices. Um, you have enough to worry about, and this is what we specialize in. So it's worth investing in having someone like us on your team for your long-term health. I think a lot of mamas kind of push this off thinking like, oh, that's like another expense. It's not an expense. It is an investment in your health and it is worth it. I promise you because delaying it is only going to make it more expensive later on. And then it's a bigger issue and a bigger expense. Not to mention the emotional toll that that takes on your body too. Let us help you on the front end. And especially if you know that you want to have likely more than one child, it's really important to come see us in between those pregnancies to make sure your body is strong again 
to go into your subsequent pregnancy. Because I have a lot of mamas that, you know, come and see me because they didn't get the support they needed in between each of those pregnancies. So then again, we start kind of like our reserve is already lowered with the next baby. And then that stresses the system even more. And then again, with the next one, if we're having, you know, multiple children, and especially back to back, that stresses the body even faster. So having that physical therapy support and understanding the importance of that strengthening in order to help your body be most successful through all the things. Yeah, definitely. Cool. I mean, that, yeah, I would just yeah. echo that. Um, it, so this is kind of jumping back to like a, that six week visit. Um, yeah. Just another thought I had was that, so maybe, and we've talked about this before too, that the pelvic floor sometimes is a little elusive maybe. Totally. Yeah. Um, you you don't see it. It's not like your, your biceps, you're doing bicep curls. You can, you can see it, you can touch it. Um, totally. And I guess you can touch your pelvic floor to some extent too. So, um, you could, it's, a little, it's not a little easy more. to visualize. Yeah. Right. Right. Totally. So, um, think about if you're having trouble, um, understanding this concept of a gradual return, think of something that may be more familiar to you, like an ACL reconstruction or rotator cuff repair, that those people are, depending on the exact surgery that they have, they're immobilized at the shoulder for six weeks, or they're on crutches for three weeks, and then they start to walk with full weight bearing, and then they start to use their arm for writing, and gradually we get that progressive loading and your body is getting used to it. You're building up the strength again and the control and being able to react. If something is thrown at you, can you catch it? Or is it just going to go right by because you can't move your arm fast enough? So right. we don't go from surgery day one to throwing a baseball on day two. Mm -hmm. That's months. <laughs> Right. Or and, even six weeks. <laughs> yeah. Even six weeks. Like what some, yeah. some of the ACL reconstruction, reconstruction um, with those athletes that I've worked with and they get this all clear from their ortho. I'm like, why? I mean, you, mm -hmm. you can't do a, you can't do a squat. Yeah. How, how can you run or play soccer or do gymnastics, whatever it is. Um, and this is similar to an OB that they don't have that movement experience. They don't do the assessment. That's just not their thing. And that's okay. We don't do surgeries. Exactly. <laughs> it, it's, I, it's I can't tell you how to do that. Right or wrong. My job. It's yeah. just, we do different things. So trust right. the expert in that field to get you right. back to what you want to do. And right. for postpartum, You've got to have that team of an OB and a PT and a lactation consultant and your family and your friends and it goes on and on. But start with an OB yeah. and a pelvic floor PT and you're you're in pretty good hands. Totally. And in order to find a pelvic floor PT, many of you may not even know like, okay, well, so now I know about this whole pelvic floor PT thing and like, how do I find one? So you can absolutely just punch into Google pelvic floor PT near me, see what pops up. You may or may not find one. We're a little bit rare. However, that doesn't mean that you still can't get support from us. Thanks to the telehealth world, which has also kind of exploded, especially during you know the current situation of our world, many of us are offering virtual visits, which are still super darn helpful in terms of providing you with actionable steps and guidance and education around all the things and even in more depth to what Megan and I have been talking about today. Um, where you can find a lot of pelvic floor PT providers is um, on the pelvicguru.com website. And I'll post this in the links below. Also, there is a free online directory where you can search for providers that can help give you support here. And also from a, um, a, a medical licensure standpoint, as long as you are within the state um, borders, you can see any public floor PT from a virtual standpoint that is within that jurisdiction from a legal standpoint. So for example, I have my medical license in California, 
So I am legally allowed to support any patient virtually with any pelvic floor issue, as long as they are, re are a resident of the state of California, or for Megan, in her case, New York. So if you are having difficulty finding someone that is geographically within a reasonable distance from you, know that you have the other option to seek out virtual support from anyone that's within your state. So that can also be super helpful. And even sometimes I have my some of my newer mamas where seeing me virtually, even though they're physically within a short driving distance of me, it sometimes just allows them to have care because they might not be able to have childcare support and all the other things that might make it a barrier to get to see me in person. So that can also be something that you can discuss with the pelvic floor PT to give you some help and also work around your needs as a new mom. And you can also, um, that website I think is really helpful. And you can also ask your PT if you have a relationship with a PT from a previous injury, just ask because yeah. they may know somebody in the area um, if you want to see someone in person as well, um, and, or check that website. And I think the, um, I think the APTA has one too. They do. There right? is one on the APTA. Yep. It doesn't tend to be as robust. So that's yeah. why I usually default to recommending the pelvic guru one, but yes, both are absolutely, um, resources and available and I'll link both of those, um, in the comments from this video. So you guys can use that as your resources. Um, for anyone who's looking for someone so that you can also just take out as much of the guesswork of finding one of us to connect with. Um, and, and two, like Megan and I were talking, so you have, you know, your, we recommend it, your, your six week postpartum visit, ask your OB for a referral. If you have difficulty getting a referral from that OB, you have two options. One, you can reach out to any other um, physician that is, has been treating you recently to ask them to write you a referral. Any MD is able to write one. And also if you, for whatever reason, are still having pushback with that, advocate for yourself and say, I would like you then to document in my chart that you're refusing to write me a referral for PT. I've had to have a couple of my patients actually say that to providers and then they were immediately able to get a referral. So know that you are well within your right to ask for a referral for that. Okay. And at that six week postpartum visit, if you are having any pain, any, you know, issues with leaking or incontinence, um, things like that, while that may still be very common at that six weeks, it is by no means something that you need to just deal with or normal and pelvic floor PTs help with that immediately. So let us help you with that. Don't wait or see if it gets better. Let us help you right away with that. Okay. And then go through your process with a pelvic floor PT to help you guide into strengthening and getting back to those higher level activities, i.e. running, and then connecting possibly with a running PT or a running coach like Megan or I to be able to help you know how to then grade back up your mileage and get some more training specific to whatever your running long-term goals are. That's the best way to be able to be successful with this process. And Megan, how can people connect with you and work with you? Because outside of just the medical diagnoses, if you're having back pain, hip pain, pelvic floor pain, any of that stuff, we need to be within the state. But if you're wanting just someone to work with in terms of running coaching or gradually returning back to running, but you're not having any quote unquote aches, pains, or issues, you're just wanting guidance then you don't even have to worry about the state licensure rules. We can just help you from a wellness standpoint. Right. So Megan, how can people connect with you um, both from a PT side if they're in New York, but also on the wellness side? So um, for a PT from New York, I have my own practice and I have a mobile practice actually. So um, I have mobile and virtual options and right now I'm just doing virtual, but um, <laughs> I think most of us are doing that, but yeah. Um, so I'll post my comment or my um, contact information in the links below. So everyone Perfect. has that. Um, yeah. But I have a mobile practice and then I can do if it's just wellness and coaching. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, I, it doesn't matter if you're in New York or not. Um, but this, yeah, this is really, I want to be able to be a resource for moms and for women and, to really capitalize on the strength of the female body, but we have to do it the right way. 
so 100%. that we can get the most out of it. Um, so use your resources, use us, ask questions. Yep. We're here yeah. to support you. Totally. Thank you, Megan. And yeah, we, we wanted to share this video and to kind of have this discussion today to just let you know what your options are, because I think that's such a huge piece that so many women deserve to know, but don't have access to this information. And we want to help move that needle forward in terms of access to this information and knowing what you have available to you. And we don't want women to just deal with these things. Life is too short and mamas, you have way too much that you're already doing for everybody else. You deserve to feel good and strong and to be able to do all the things for you too. And so this is what we're here for, to provide that guidance. Um, and I too am available for any questions or um, support around how to find someone to you know, reach out to if I'm not in your state of licensure. Um, I also have a free Facebook group, Mama Runs Wild, that talks about all of these things in terms of women's health, pelvic health, all the things that I talk with my patients quite often about. I decided, you know what, I'm really frustrated that there's not a lot of good information out on Dr. Google. Let's fix that. So please feel free if this is something that you would like to learn about or you'd like to join the group, um, just comment, um, comment strong down below and we'll go ahead and get that going. Um, and I'll send you a link to join the group. Um, and I'll also share my contact information so you can connect with me. And also, um, Megan, please put your uh, social contacts so we can connect with you um, on Facebook, on Instagram, all those kinds of things too, so that um, we can continue to have this conversation and just to continue to support ladies helping ladies, because that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. All right. Megan, thank you so much for taking time today to jump on here and to have this conversation. Um, thank you to all of our viewers, both on the live or if you're catching this on the replay. Um, we'd love for you to comment live or comment replay um, so we can have um, we can know who was here and be able to connect with you either now or later on. Um, and if you found this video helpful, please feel free to tag um, a fellow mother runner in the comments because that way she'll be able to also catch this video because the more people that know about this, the more people can get the help that they need. So help us help others in this process. So thank you all so much and hope you all have a great rest of your Monday. Thanks, Chris. Bye guys. Bye.